Okay, that was a quick example of me using log for j2 to write to a CSV log file. So let's go ahead and dive into the code to see what changes were done. So one of the first things you're going to have to do in the pomxml file where you actually have the log4j dependency li listed there, you're going to also want to include this dependency as well. This is going to be useful for writing log4j2 logs to a CSV file. Then in the log4j2 xml file that I have, these are the new entries that I put in here. I got some log properties here, including the name of the actual CSV log file and including the actual header row content. So if you recall, when I open up this CSV file, the header row is index, date, and instance. And you can see that that's actually defined by this property over here, which is index, date, and instance. And where this is used is you can see that this is a new rolling log section that I have for the CSV file. And you can see that this CSV header row property is referenced over here in the CSV parameter layout where we have the comment as delimiters and we have the header row being defined with this parameter which again is index date and instance. The last change here in the log4j xml file is just adding the csv logger in the logger section and you can see here this is referencing the app ender which is csv file which corresponds to this rolling log. Now in the log helper.java file that I have, I added a new logger, CSV logger, which is going to be doing the code to get the logger for CSV logger here. So you can see again that the CSV logger it corresponds to the logger over here, which has the same text CSV logger. And then as I mentioned before, this references the app ender called CSV file which up over here defines the CSV file, you know, rolling log file uh, parameters. And with that set, I can basically just use the CSV logger file anywhere in my application to start logging stuff to a CSV file. And what I did here was in the monitor class, you can see that the changes that I've done is essentially within this try catches, I added a for loop where I'm iterating from 0 to 100 and I'm invoking the CSV logger.info and specifying the first column is actually going to be ignored and then I have the index i, a new date java object and just a string text monitor. So i here is going to be you know basically the numbers from 0 to 99 the new date is going to be just a new date at the current time that this is invoked and then the last column is going to be monitor which is just going to be monitor for every single CSV logger file. So if I go ahead and open up the CSV that I have over here, you'll see that that's basically what's being logged, the index, the date, time, and the string text here. So if I go ahead to run this one more time, you're going to see it's just going to append that to the existing CSV file. Okay, it's done. You can see it's going from 0 to 99, but since I ran it again, you can see here that it started from zero again, and you can actually see the timestamp that this second run is like a minute and a half after the last run. And you'll see that it'll just go ahead and continue logging to the 99th row, which is a the 99th index within that for loop. Okay guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you did like what you saw, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as mentioned earlier in the video, I do have this code that you can get digitally. But I do ask for a small fee donation, and you can see that in the description below. Of course, you're more than welcome just to copy as you see in these videos as well. So with that said, thank you once again, and I'll see you on the next one.